If you ask any professional cyclist or cycling coach how they track their training and analyze their training, nine times out of 10, they will say they use training peaks. You might have also heard the terms TSS, IF, and normalized power thrown around on your local group ride. Well, Training Peaks are the inventors of those too. They have also had a huge impact in performance cycling and coaching, but now across the sport too. But who on earth are they? Well, today Training Peaks have invited us here to the HQ in Colorado to go and meet them, get to know them a little bit better, and most importantly, get to the bottom of TSS. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Welcome to Training Peaks. Thanks for having me. It's a pretty cool place yeah, to go here. Yeah, Colorado's not a bad spot. <laughs> pretty cool. Wanna grab a coffee? Oh yes, please. All right. Definitely need one after the jet lag. <laughs> Today, I've been lucky enough to catch up with co-founder Dirk Friel. But before I do, let me explain who Training Peaks are. Most of you might have already heard of Training Peaks. It's extremely popular amongst the cyclists. It all started back in 1999, and it helps prepare any athlete, new or old, for any race goal. The platform allows you to log all your training data and help analyze it to get the best performance out of you. Plus, it offers over 10,000 different coaches to help you get to your goal. Just before we catch up with Dirk, I quickly wanted to leave my very own mark here. Oh, I can't not, can't not, can't not help myself. Uh, How about we take a seat here? Yeah, that looks brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off. What is Training Peaks? Oh man, it's it's a lot of things to a lot lots of things to different people. But uh, you know, we really kind of focus a lot on the coach, kind of coach centric. We believe in expert instruction, so helping the coach manage their athletes, um, and for athletes, getting expert instruction. Uh, we we believe there's a right way to, to prepare for a race. Um, getting expert instruction is definitely what we're focused on. So really trying to help pair coaches and athletes is actually a lot of what we do. But we are a software company. So the software helps engage the, um, the coach and the athlete. Um, and you know, the, the software itself, I think of it as track analyze plan. It helps you track what you're doing. We're compatible with all the devices from Garmin and Sunto and Polar and everything else. Um, even WHOOP, you know, heart rate, HRV, etc. cetera. Um, we then analyze the data and we have lots of kind of leading edge. We've pioneered a lot of uh, metrics around an analysis, especially around power, training with power, um, and then back to planning. So if you are, are working with a coach, they can see what you've been doing, they can analyze it, they get a bigger picture of, of your trends and they know what your goal is and they help you prepare for the next event. So it's kind of that in a nutshell. <laughs> and it started, what, 20 years ago? Yeah, we started in 1999. How did it all start? Well, I was a professional cyclist. Um, my fam, my fam, parents literally have a coaching company. My father was an author, cycling author. He wrote the Cyclist Training Bible and Triathlete's Training Bible and many other books. And he was a, a coach. And so towards the end of my pro cycling career, I started coaching with him in the family business. And I was like, hey, dad, why are we using the fax machine and email attachments? And literally we had .SRM and .CSV and .HRM and all kinds of files attached to emails. And we had fax paper coming in with training logs. And you just couldn't really you know, make sense of all that data coming in in all the different forms that it came in. Um, it was late 90s, there was this thing called the internet, so I had the idea of, hey, hey dad, let's bring this to the internet. It would be a better quality service for our athletes and it would make our lives better as coaches. And how has it evolved since 1999? How many people was in the business when it first started back then? <laughs> uh, three. There are three co-founders. So myself, my father, um, and actually the best man at my wedding, uh, Gear Fisher was another co-founder, and he was the technologist and we were the practitioners, my father and I. Um, and so we really kind of had the vision and we could work with Gear and um, on building out the technology. So literally it started 
with just you know three three friends. Um, no business plan, no debt, just sweat equity and working on it. But really, it was with the intent of making our coaching business um, better. And then it, and then we started selling it to to other coaches, and a lot of coaches were really interested in using such a platform. So we created a separate business, a software business, and from that day forward, you know, I spent more and more time on the software side of things and less and less time coaching. You have so many pro athletes and you know really big cycling teams using Training Peaks, but who would you say has been your biggest athlete that's used Training Peaks? I don't know, I hate to rank any of the teams, but let's just say, you know, almost every year, without doubt, we have the winner of the Tour de France. You know, that's pretty much a, a given. So it's great when you know, I always had the thought that I wanted to build a business that could be trusted and all the teams are competing against each other, but yet they can use the same tools. And I want to be welcome in any team bus equally. Um, each team uses Training Peaks differently. So yeah, let's just say the majority of them do use it. And that's like really proud, you know, of that fact. Um, our first team was 2007 T-Mobile and uh, Mark, Mark Cavendish was, you know, on that squad then. It was his first first year, rookie year. And how valuable is it to pro cyclists in their training? You know, it's, it's amazing because it's actually kind of become almost the backbone of their career in a lot of cases. They've started with Training Peaks as a junior. They go through, you know, an academy, U23 ranks. They go pro. And now we are, you know, now we're to the stage, we've been in it long enough that, that you know, pros are retiring, and oftentimes they'll contact me first, and they're like, hey, don't tell me when I'm retiring, but I want to start coaching, you know, can I get a coach account? Um, so now you see pros becoming ex-pros, but actually coaches or director sportifs. And so now they have intimate knowledge of the software. They know how to, you know, find the data they want to find to see how well the team is, you know, maybe performing coming up and helps them, you know, make, um, selections for upcoming races. So it's great when a, a director actually understands the data as well and can get, can actually get in there along with the coaches and the physiologists. Get the most out of it. Yeah. And is, is it just for pro athletes? Because, you know, there's mm. a lot of information in there. Can, you know, amateur cyclists use Training Peaks? Uh, absolutely. I mean, the majority of folks that use Training Peaks are certainly not professional. They actually look a lot like me, you know, 45 to 55. X-Pro. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe not everybody's X-Pro, but, but uh, yeah, you know, they're training for the gravel race, the Grand Fondo, the Century Ride, oftentimes their first event, you know, and it's, it can be overwhelming. So how do I prepare for this event? Um, you know, so they, they then start to seek out a training plan, and oftentimes, you know, coaches will publish training plans in our training plan store, and that's a great place for kind of beginner, any intermediate, you know, cyclists to start with. Um, I always say though, like a coach brings a lot more value to the younger athletes than to the older athletes. And in many cases, you can hire a coach and they can make you an hour faster, you know, in a gravel race or a Grand Fondo um, versus trying to do it on your own. Um, with a the pro, they're gonna maybe make the coach, you know, the pro a minute faster. <laughs> so there's a lot of value, you know, and you know, everybody deserves a coach, you know, and having that accountability and that that really one to one on one connection with the coach, you know, is really valuable and can get you a long, long ways instead of trying to make it up on your own. How many people use training peaks? Oh geez. Well I'll say we have tens of thousands of coaches. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, coaches on average might have 15 to 30 or so athletes within their account. So, but you know, it's definitely grown a lot over the years and we're still, you know, growing at a great rate. Even COVID certainly helped, helped you know, the business um, and continues to, to accelerate. You don't have to have a coach to use Training Peaks. No, absolutely not. Actually, a lot of people start with Training Peaks because they just buy a power meter and they want to make sense of the data and they may have bought a book about training with power and so they want to put that into practical use within their own training, not maybe ready for a coach. They just want to learn more about the numbers and how to make themselves you know, better. So our software will do a lot to help them make sense of the training. And training with power is kind of going from 
seeing the world two dimensionally to seeing the world three, you know, three dimensionally, there's another kind of dimension to your training, which is really an aha moment when you kind of realize that. The data helps you formulate better decisions in the future. And you can go out on pretty much any group ride or club run and someone will talk about TSS, normalized uh, power, IF. Yeah. Where did these all start? How did, yeah. how did you come about them? It's like the early 2000s, really, you know, and, and there was some, you know, some physiologists out there working on this stuff in the background. You know, Dr. Andy Coggin is definitely, you know, one of the first pioneers. I found that in Europe, um, the science was kind of kept behind closed doors and not a lot of, there wasn't a lot of sharing going on. It's like kind of really held, very secretive. Held really was secretive, exactly. And it was very, you know, scientifically um, focused and coming out of labs and that was wonderful, but it wasn't really practical knowledge that was shared with coaches or with athletes. And in the United States, we had the same thing, you know, physiologists, scientists working on um, many of the same type of concepts. But we had a lot of great, smart masters athletes that were also very numbers oriented and they were just sharing all this great data and they were interacting with the physiologists on forums. And so it really just like ignited um, all this amazing um, knowledge share. For anybody who doesn't know, what is TSS? TSS is training stress score. And what we do is we start with the intensity of the ride and it's relative to that individual. So that individual's threshold power. Um, and it can be heart rate as well. But we take the intensity of the ride and basically multiply it by the duration and come up with a single number to describe the workload of that individual ride. But we, we don't like to over uh, analyze you know, today's ride. It, the bigger value in TSS is when it's combined over time with all, all of your days combined TSS scores and what that trend looks like over time. And it helps you formulate, you know, what is my fitness fatigue and form? And how do I manipulate my fitness fatigue and form as I prepare for an event? And training has changed so much over the past 20 years. What do you think the biggest change ah. has been, apart from Training Peaks? Yeah. <laughs> I think it really, I, you know, partly led by Training Peaks, but it's more, it's the individualization of training you might have, you know, two athletes training for the same event and they may actually have the same threshold, but their profile is still different. They're still individuals and you will ideally have a unique training for those two individuals, even though they're training for the same event with the same threshold power, right? So it's literally getting down to the individualization of training. Also just getting away from the, the tradition in the past, you know, the director sportif was more or less the coach. Now we have a, a high performance team, you know, embedded with the squads and they're at the training camps and they're reviewing the data every day and they're, they're refining the workouts at the individual level instead of leaving it up to the director um, or even in the past, there was nobody directing it. It was up to the athlete, you know, to figure it out on their own. And what do you think the biggest training mistake is that you see people do? Oh. I mean, too high of intensity too often, um, stagnation, plateau, um, not enough of uh, modulation, meaning like rest days are rest days. You know, they're easy and they're oftentimes more important than the hard days. And so having that variation in the training between being able to really hit the numbers um, when you need to hit them comes down to how well did you rest leading into that workout. Probably the biggest mistake is just athletes going out and trying to set new records every single day, which is impossible. But if you try and do that too often, you're just simply gonna plateau. And you have so many metrics on the Training Peaks platform. What one do you think is the most important one? Oh, if you're really, one. Oh, most important one. <laughs> it all, it kind of depends too. I mean, I guess intensity, I mean, I guess based on what I just mentioned, like the most important metric is, is, you know, might be intensity. And how many days or how much data do you need mm. for someone if they just started using Training Peaks for them to really make use of the platform? 
Well, the platform they could use right away. They could start looking at today's ride and yesterday's ride. But in terms of the performance management chart, you, you definitely want to give it more than six weeks. You know, unfortunately, you have to give that some time to build to get some real valuable data from. Um, but you could start analyzing today's ride, you know, right away and get great value in, in just that alone. Can you tell us something that we might not know about Train of Peaks? <laughs> is we're under a corporate umbrella. The corporation is Peaksware, and Peaksware believes in deliberate practice. And you can apply deliberate practice to any skill that you want to learn. That includes music. And so we actually have sister companies. We have two music businesses within our, within our, um, our building that we share offices with, and that's Alfred Music and um, Make Music. And so they help students in music education, get better at training, you know, playing their instruments. Um, and so that's something a lot of people don't know is how we, we share a lot between the music industry and the fitness industry, and we learn a lot and cross-pollinate between the two. And so we really believe in deliberate practice, and we think we could take this model to more domains beyond fitness and music. One last question. What's your favorite feature on Train Peaks? <clears throat> Um, when I set a new threshold power record. That, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> always a good when you get a little star. On little January star. 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for the chat today. It's been really good to get an insight. Into yeah, yeah. Peaks. Thank you for visiting. It's been great. That's been great. Thank you. <laughs> it's been a great day here at Training Peaks chatting to Dirk and finally getting to the bottom of what TSS actually is. So a big thank you to Training Peaks for having us today. But if you did like this video, then make sure to give it a big like and hit that subscribe button while you're there. And I'll see you in the next one.